All right, well, this is actually about my fifth time to try to make this video today. Um, rightly dividing God's Word. You know, I may not know all of God's Word, but I do know that if it says something, it means something. And, uh... I don't know why when people hear a scripture that says something why um, they say something and it doesn't even make sense why it doesn't make sense and uh, oh, how do you say it um I just don't think it makes sense some of the some of the stuff people say out here. Um, you know, someone brought up earlier today about uh, being crucified with Christ, but I think that that is someone that's living for God, and I think that crucif crucifying the flesh a thing that someone has to do out here is a total different thing you know even though it even though it sounds the same there's there's a difference between them and i know that his people crucifying the flesh is something that we have to do that uh crucifying the flesh with christ um is someone that's living for him because there's no, I mean, that's, I just don't understand why people don't feel like, uh, don't realize that you actually have to do something God requires of it. I mean, just because the Gentiles were grafted in and, um, uh, there was disobedience in the Old Testament uh, with the people in Israel. Doesn't mean that he's that uh, disobedience has been gone away with, and uh, or unrighteous or wicked or all these things out here of how a person should be living their life. It hasn't been done. It hasn't been done away with, people. And I know that. I don't know how. I, I would like to know the person that first said, because I know someone out here had to say this first, had to say that Jesus. I mean, when you have been forgiven for your sins, that your present and future sins have been done away with. Because I would question them, where do you get that? Just because it says all sins, mean, and I know what it means. It rightly dividing means, it means that the sins, when you come to God and you live a repentive life, your sins go into remission. They're no longer, they're no longer looked at. And I know when it says, believe for the remission of sins, which it does say that in the book of Acts. I'm telling you this right now. That is obedience. It's requiring of something, but it doesn't make sense that you can be saved by just simply believing if we're required to live a certain type of life. Why would God, drive, when I was driving down the road, why would God put Christ-like in my head? Then later that night that I would witness Christ-like and humble, just like I witnessed, just like he put in my head. And I even called my friend Darren at the time. I even called my friend Darren and told him what, that, what God did. And uh, Christ-like is a lifestyle. And... I, I, 
there's been many a times that I've witnessed people say that it's just like letting regeneration happen. Letting regeneration happen is going to your whole aspect on this life and how we are is going to change. I know that that's what regeneration is. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind, and I, I'll say it again, and I've said it before, that the majority of people that have come to the Lord have come to the Lord with sincerity. But the stuff that the, the, the church preaches would lead so many people astray. Again, who cares what a piece of paper says that your denomination has when they give you and don't say that they don't give it to you. I'm not going to say every denomination, but I'm telling you, they have a list of things that they believe. I've seen it from the I've seen, all you have to do is Google and you can see the Baptist church. I know I know that the Nazarene church has one and I know that all these other churches have it. And uh, what they believe and what they stand for. You can you can you can Wikipedia it. You can Wikipedia it and see it. And uh, but that's that's not what it's about. It's about learning God's word. It was never about learning man's word. And I think that the thing that hurts a Christian the most is when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You read his word. You should understand if you fear, he'll give you wisdom. And then, lo and behold, here comes a pastor. And he tells you something that's contrary to the word of God. And you take his word. Again, eternal security. The words. Once saved, the words. Uh, preservation of the saints, I think, is, the, is another once saved wording. None of it is in the Bible whatsoever. None. And... Um, You know, I would like to talk, I mean, I've talked about all these other denominations. I mean, I don't know the Church of Christ. Uh, but I don't know all these denominations, but if I was to pick up the Bible, if I was to want to come to the Lord, I'd want to pick up the Bible. I'd want to fear Him, read the Word, and uh, and not care what anybody else says. The only thing that I would care is that if I sit here and read something and I and I came to conclusion that this is what this means and someone else says the same thing, right on. But I know right now, I'm telling you this, I don't think a one of you ever picked up the Bible without listening to man first and saw once saved. And all these years, all these years, I just got done saying it in a video. All these years, people lived a certain life after giving their life to Christ. They didn't go out and do all the worldly things that people are doing today and calling themselves Christians. They didn't. Every once in a while, someone would slip up. And then they would do something that they normally would regret. Even to this day, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it's okay. Because if you committed adultery, you were wicked, and you had to confess of your sins to be cleansed of all unrighteousness. You had to do these things. You had to repent that you weren't going to go back to it. Don't promise, but you. Do your best that you're not going to go back to it. 
And you can ask God for forgiveness and He'll forgive you. That's why I've said those three things for the longest time. Repent, confess, or ask God for forgiveness. And they all work. And what's sad is that there are people talking against repentance. And then there are people out here talking against asking God for forgiveness. But if you're going to put down repentance, you might as well put down confessing of your sins. Because if you think you can't lose salvation, why confess of your sins? But I don't... Um, I'm telling you right now, this is what's sad. What makes a person today be a false prophet? I've wondered that. How in the world do people become a false prophet? I think it's a pride issue, maybe, even. You know, uh, there was a lady on the on YouTube that used to make videos, and in her videos, she would play a certain type of music, and I, I witnessed, and I and I started listening to this woman, and the, and someone commented that the music that she was playing, I just wanted to hear what she had to say. That's what I like. Uh, that's what I. The reason why I've listened to all the people that I've listened to. I didn't listen to them so I could absorb what they had. Because I don't care what they have to say. At the end of the day. Because uh, I'm not going to get deceived. I'm not going to get deceived at all. And uh, now I, I threw myself completely off now. But I, I, I just know that the things that people say out here that's in the Bible. There was a guy the other day. There was literally a guy that I listened to on the radio that sit here and admitted that people have come up and asked him things about certain scriptures. And the things that they said weren't even phrased right the way they said it. And it's kind of like me sitting here saying... Uh, i give you an example. The, I don't know why I have to give an example all the time. The sky is blue, but the Bible says it's red. And you go up and you say, and you say, the, the Bible, I mean, uh, the, the, it's blue, and, 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 and somebody's going, blue? Where did you get that? Well, that's what this guy was saying. That the, the, the Christians had walked up to him and asked him questions, and it didn't even make sense. And uh, because not only were they phrasing it wrong, it just didn't make sense. And I know that a lot of the things that people say, it's been told by someone else. That's the reason why these people are saying it. But I know this, and this is this this debunks anyone out here talking about once saved. If you keep on sinning, like the book of Hebrews says, that you lose your sacrifice. Who is your sacrifice? Jesus Christ. How can you lose your sacrifice? By turning away, falling away, going apostate, backsliding, and being disobedient, being rebellious. Do I think that it a, a part of the reason why so many Christians? want to give the wrong message 
because they still want to entice their flesh and be in rebellion. And it's not going to work. It doesn't work. Well, I, all I know is this, that the stuff that I've sit here and said that God has shown me, told me, I'm not lying about none of it. When I went, when I rec when I saw that date in closed caption, when I watched that, uh, Shepherd's Chapel video. Now, a lot of people, right off the get-go, they're going to go, well, I don't like Shepherd's Chapel. I don't know what to say about that. He, all I know is they were, they read from the Bible, and they say what's, what, what the stuff says in the Bible, and if you don't like it because, you're, because it's against what you believe, that's your problem, not my problem. Just like, I know Mystery Babylon's America, but if you've been brought up to believe it was Rome, that's your problem, not mine. And um, it went asterisk, 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 asterisk. It gave a month and a year. This is the year. This is the year. Do I believe the Antichrist is going to be revealed? Sure do. <clears throat> I've heard different people sit here and say when the Antichrist is going to be revealed. You know, it could be pre-trib, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean the next day that the that the rapture is going to happen. It could be six months. It could be ten years. Well, I know it's not ten years, but I rewound that video because I recorded it. I recorded. I was recording Shepherd's Chapel's videos. Rewound it, and it was not there. Nowhere to be seen. I don't, I, again, I don't know what people should do. I don't know what you should do. You should take it to God. If you're living for God and you know you've got the Holy Spirit, you should take it to God. If you're if you don't have if you're if you if you're living in sin you do not have the Holy Spirit and God ain't gonna have no part with you. It's kind of like saying something to God and it doesn't mean anything. Because I truly know a hypocrite, a hypocrite, someone that knows that they're gonna do something wrong against God, even having that mindset is wrong. Everybody says, you can't go without sinning. That's the wrong mindset. The mindset is the armor of God. The Holy Spirit and God himself will help you prevail. Like I said, I've seen what the Holy Spirit will do. I know what the Holy Spirit will do. You take it to God and I promise you, you'll see what the Holy Spirit will do. That's why I don't, that's why when you, when everybody makes their excuses for sins, it's not going to work. It's not going to work, people. Everybody had all their ample opportunity to take it to God. You have, an, you have a problem, you take it to God and he gets rid of it. If you're sincere. But if you put your foot back into it again... Uh, that's on you. That's free will again. So, and then, you fight the temptation, so you gain the crown. That's what, what's his name said the other day. Uh, uh, the guy from Tennessee. Not Lawson. Well, that's two times, two places it says you got to fight the temptation of sin. That's what you're fighting. That's what you're fighting against is a temptation of sin. So if it says you fight the temptation to gain the crown, 
And then it says, fight the temptation so Satan will flee. You got to do something. I got to pause this. It says you got to crucify the flesh. You've got to do something. You've got to repent. You've got to do something. You've got to turn. you got to have a change of mind. you got to do something. Leading to a change of heart. you got to do something. you got to rep- uh, re- uh, turn from sin. you got to do something. you got to turn to God. you got to do something. you got to live a good life. And it, I promise you, it's all over God's word. you got to do something. You cannot... You cannot be like the world. And I'm telling you right now, the majority of Christians are like the world. That's exactly where we're at right now, is the majority of Christians are just like the world. When people are out here doing wrong things, and Christians are doing the same thing, there's no difference. There's no difference. Believing doesn't solve it. Believing doesn't solve it. Obedience does. And, um, like I said, if you're a disobedient Christian, you're, you are living in unbelief. You can watch the videos on YouTube and see these people talking about this. Now, how I found it before I ever Googled or YouTubed any videos is beyond me. Because I never watched a one of them. I ran across that scripture. I know what I, I did. I Googled unbelief. And then I found the scripture. And I saw the parallel. You hit parallel on there on uh, Bible study tools. And it gave the NIV version and the King James version. I'm like disobedient unbelief so they're using one word that is supposedly to be the same disobedient one bible says unbelief the other one does you can find it for yourself i've made the video for it <clears throat> so when everybody sits there and says that they believe they're actually living in unbelief if they're disobedient to god that's it And what is wrong right now with people that they cannot see the truth? And I do believe that people have a seared conscience. I think that this is the repercussions for not following God's living word. You know, this guy sit here and said the other day he didn't believe in the Bible but he believed in everything about Jesus Christ. He said, he talked about in the Bible that we're supposed to follow Jesus Christ. And he didn't believe anything about the Bible. Well, I know the Bible's true, and I don't know why this guy was saying it. <clears throat> but the Bible is true. And it is about Jesus' word. You read something in uh, uh, that Jesus says, You look at that over Paul. If you can't understand what Paul is saying and Jesus specifically says something, you follow his word. Because he wasn't talking to the Jews. He was talking to the world. Wasn't talking to people in Israel. He was talking to the people in the world. You're reading his word made flesh. And, uh, I think it's more understandable to listen to what Jesus said than, except for the parables than it is for what Paul said. Because there are a lot of people out here that think that Paul's word is different than Jesus's, but I don't think it is. Because even Paul knew himself that he couldn't live the lifestyle that he had to fight with every day. When he had to crucify the flesh and all that stuff. He knew he couldn't live that lifestyle. And see here's a sad thing. Back in those days. If I if I came up and I told you something. There's a, there's a, a, a 90 plus percent chance you're going to believe me. Today. It's not the same way. 
If we had today's people walk up to Jesus Christ and him t- and him talk like he did to the people back in those days, we would be dumbfounded. We wouldn't have a clue. And look at those people. I mean, if we just walked up to him like the people did back then, I'm not talking about the disciples. I'm talking about if you walked up to him like you lived in a town, in the first place, you would question if he even had the power to heal. If you didn't witness it with your own two eyes, hearing wasn't enough. I promise you this right now. If there's somebody out here that's healing someone, every time you every time you hear about the guy healing someone, you always question him. Did they question Jesus? Look how easy it is to get around today. Look at the message back then. And but I but Rightly dividing the word of God. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that this is rightly dividing, but I'll tell you this. What Jesus did to the guy on the cross when he forgave him and everything and accepted him in his kingdom. This guy cared. And I've heard people sit here and say, refute that what Jesus did on the cross that a person out here would have to change their life because this guy wasn't able to change his life. Are you so sure? You could read his heart. You could read his heart. I'm glad you guys can read people's hearts. But you'll know someone by their fruit, though. So Jesus sitting here talking to him. He forgives him. Tells him he'll be in the kingdom. You can't answer for that. Just like you can't answer for what uh, it is finished. That is, I mean, bold letters. It is finished. It's over. What Jesus came here and did was done. How can you, how can you rightly divide that has anything to do with taking the law away? You can't. It's physically impossible to say that that has anything to do with the law. So who's rightly dividing the word? Very few are. As a matter of fact, the majority of believe the majority of people believe that it is finished means something. I, if I see her and heard it, what do I think it is finished means? What Jesus' goal to come here and do? Is done. Nothing more. But I've seen so many people boast that it is finished as if it's as if the whole world changed. Uh uh-uh. God never changed, people. Same God. Same God that punished people back then is going to be punishing people today when this is all over with. The same God. And you know what? Who can blame him? Oh, yeah. All the people out here that are not living in his word. Or to his word. Oh, man. I hope you don't kick me out of here. I... I don't know what to say, people. I mean, sitting here saying that you can't be snatched out has absolutely nothing to do with you losing your salvation. That has to do with me being able to do something to you and you being able to lose your salvation. Or Satan being able to do something to you and you being able to lose salvation. That is the only thing that that scripture has anything to do with. I can't kill you and you lose your salvation. I can't do nothing to you and you lose your salvation. Satan absolutely cannot do anything to anyone out here and them lose salvation except tempt. And if you give in, whose fault? Free will. It's 
all he can do. That's all he can do. God can do anything. But Satan can very he can barely do anything. Bad is most people are following him. Most Christians are following him. Why? The heart. Wicked. You guys have already heard that scripture. You've already heard that scripture. That's why the ear tickling is so easy. You listen to someone and it, and you're thinking your your flesh and your heart is going Ooh. Wow. And you're hearing the wrong message. Just like just like I got done saying, if I sit here and said it is finished means uh something and it doesn't and you fall for it there we go gullible being gullible telling you right now uh, it is say it, 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 I mean uh, once saved is just like Satan telling you you cannot die well, Jesus says you will likewise perish. So how can you not die? Two different times, but it doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. I guarantee you, someone brought up the biggest light... Uh, uh, the biggest lie that Satan has ever told anyone, and this person sit here and said to judge someone. Well, that's not it, because there are a lot of people out here who know that you can righteously judge someone. And what I've sit here and all the stuff that I've truly talked about is judging the. I mean, you can judge the world. You can look around and say, "Man, there is chaos everywhere." Well, quit judging then. And if I sit here and say something about someone, how can you know my heart intent is to judge someone? For me, tattling on myself how I've been living my life, can you judge me? Huh? Okay, so I'm going to have to stop this video because I'm, I know it's going to start another video. I mean, I'm not done anyway. <laughs>